which is in the midst of the garden, God has uh, uh, God had said, "Ye shall not eat of it; neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die." Verse four. And the serpent said unto the woman, "Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as God, knowing good and evil." Verse six, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for, good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof and did it, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did it. Verse seven, and the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked and they sewed thick, thick, thick leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Verse 9 And the Lord God called unto Adam and said, where are the dog? May the good Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, so this morning, the, we are learning, so this evening we are learning from this, uh, the book of Genesis 3. So what we pick up here is that the book of Genesis is a book of beginnings. And it actually outlines how the heavens and the earth were, were created, that the world was a perfect place, that God had intended uh, that it stays like that for forever, for as long it had existed. And everything was perfect. And God had created the heavens and the earth with a good intention that it should be for our own benefit and also to reflect his goodness, that he's a, a, a God who is love. But we see that when we come to chapter three, then this, uh, I could say, the vision that God had about how the world and the earth was supposed to be it's, it's interrupted by the introduction of the serpent, which is Satan, comes in the form of the, 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 the serpent. So here we pick up from the conversation between the Eve and the stranger in the garden, the stranger which was the serpent. We pick up that Satan, it's very tricky. So what he Satan did, the first thing that he casted doubt on God's word. And then number two, he presented presented God's uh, instruction as a contradiction to to God's co co uh, command. And uh, and he Satan mentions this and says. You shall not surely die because God has said you shall surely die. So he 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 he, he says the 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 opposite in contrary to the word of God, and he creates created a suspicion in his mind to say to 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 start painting a picture that there is something better, as if that that God was hiding something better that he did not ask, wanted us to have access to. So that's where the devil says, you shall not surely die and you shall be like God. So one would actually think it would have an impression that actually God was hiding us, actually there was be the, 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 there's a potential or there was a potential that we could have the same power as the power that God has and God was hiding 
that from my so that's how the devil pitched it to to uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to Eve. And what we learn from here is that the the voice of of Satan it actually uh, became something sweet in the ears of the woman. So it was something serious, but the way it was presented to him, it was presented in a manner that was cunning, that was sweet. And we find the very same thing even today still exists, that we find that a lot of things that are in contrary to the word of God they are presented in the manner that is convenient to us, in the manner that we want to hear them, uh, the use of right words, the use of uh, uh, manipulation that, that touches our, our limbic system to feel uh, the things, the, the way we, 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 we want uh, to, uh, to feel. And here we see the steps that the devil used. He hanged around, the garden. So he was lingering around uh, the garden. The and also the same as Eve. He started being closer to, to the garden, hanging around. And also, the devil entertains a strange conversation uh, that is a conversation that uh, Eve did, it was for the first time that she had an animal uh, starting speaking, literally speaking, and he has never had a serpent uh, speaking. And it was a trick that the, 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 the devil used. Then another point is that he paid attention to the fruit. So the tree was there, the middle of the tree, the fruit was there. And uh, before the serpent came, uh, probably, but the attention was somewhere else. But immediately when the conversation started and the attention moved towards the, the very same tree and the fruit that God did not want them to access and to consume. And then lastly, we find that the, he, he acted on what was forbidden. So we learned here that there are few things that we, the, the message highlights is that number one, uh, the devil is tricky, he's not straight. And number two is that we, we as human beings, our obedience sustains our relationship with God. So when we are obedient to God, consistently, our relationship grows stronger and to be stronger with God. But when we become disobedient, it also impacts our relationship with God. We deduct here that sin separates us from, from God. And in addition to that, not only separates us, but it actually brings shame uh, to us, like we would have an experience of doing something wrong, knowing very well uh, that we, 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 we are not supposed to do it. Start with small things. We, it is difficult for us to pray. In some instances, for some, we think that we are not worthy to come to church on the Sabbath. Even when we come to church on the Sabbath, we stay right at the back there so that as soon as the service uh, finishes, we, we sneak out so that our fellow brethren cannot interact with us. The small things are part of the, the shame that we, we actually have. But there's one thing that I love about this whole picture is that in the midst of this mess, God still goes out and he called out for Eve and Adam in the midst of the problem that they have uh, found, they, they have thrown themselves into. And here we see at, uh, when you read verse 9, God asks a question. It says, where are you? Where, where art thou? So even though the damage was done, 
but all still pursued and reached out to uh, to uh, to Eve. It's the same with us. Nothing has changed. So when we look at where the controversy had started, we are still part of that controversy. We may not be necessarily in the literal pattern, but when you look at it, the concept or that we learn or the experience that is recorded of what Eve and Adam had experienced, which we are part of the, our experiences are part of the consequences that resulted from it. It has actually had shown from the start that God had already had a plan and a the plan of salvation to actually solve for this problem. So as I conclude, before we pray, I would like us to remember that number one, that Satan is cunning. So Satan is cunning and uh, he uses different strategies, uh, styles, manners that are a bit tricky. And uh, you, you think that, you know, this I can handle, then it's fine, I can manage this, only to find out that at the end, you, you, we would be in, in deep trouble. And, uh, and the second one is that many have been taught lies. Uh, we leave ev evidence of it today, that there are a lot of false teachings today that we experience on our day to day. And those false teachings, they have affected the quality of life when it comes to those people who are entrenched into these teachings to a point that some, they, they lose their life, their lifespan, uh, it actually it becomes shorter uh, because of the life that they're living based on these uh, false teachings. The very some false teachings, they bring complications into our lives on earth. And it's because of these lies that the world is caught up into that we are having these uh, problems. Then we also learn that in, in this controversy, this stranger in the garden has brought the distortion to God's word. So I, I am actually reflecting of what we had discussed uh, yesterday, Sabbath afternoon, solar scripture, the manner that we, uh, if you read a verse uh, on its own, Isaiah, example of what we read about Isaiah 4, verse 1, where it says that there would come a time a man will have seven wives, and uh, in Ecclesiastes 12, verse 12, that uh, literally, when you read literally, it say that uh, too much knowledge will destroy you, it will wear it down, and uh, you must stop making the books. Uh, so, so this is the part of uh, the distortion that others, when they read the word of God, they distort the word of God to actually drive their narrative or drive their agenda that the, the, which they will benefit from. And lastly is that we are separated, sin has separated us, uh, many people from, from God. As the same way as uh, Eve and, 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 and Adam, they were running away from God, trying to hit their nakedness, is the same with many uh, people and uh, many of us whom we are, we are being separated uh, by God. Remember, we have led uh, when we started the discussion that obedience sustains our relationship with God. So we just need to remember uh, that God needs someone who will be his voice uh, to reach out to those who are hiding away from him. So let us remember that wherever we are, whatever we do, uh, let us know and uh, know that God is using us to be agents to bring those who have been separated from God closer to God. So my appeal 
uh, this evening is that let us uh, ponder upon these words and uh, let us remember that it is only God, it's only Jesus who can bring us back to God. But it's not only a one-sided thing, but it's a two-way stream where our obedience, we need to constantly not obey God when it's convenient, but consistently obey God. And when we obey God, that the obedience sustains the, the, our relationship with God. And I'd like to say, God is searching for the lost mankind today. So God pursued for the lost will not end until the close of probation. So God is pursuing us on daily basis uh, so that we constantly stay in his fold, but most importantly, for our souls to be saved. It is my prayer this evening that as we will be praying, let us ponder upon these words. And we are grateful that we draw messages such as this one from the book of uh, the great controversy. Remember that we are part of the controversy on a daily basis. When you wake up in the morning, the choice to pray or not to pray, to invite God into your day, is part of the great controversy. As you go about your day to day, there are forces that are taking different forms. And you, once you understand that it is because of the controversy between Jesus and the devil, good and bad, light and darkness, it also helps us to navigate our day-to-day -day life. And we can only do that if we allow the Holy Spirit to guide us, to lead us. When we have painful experiences, it will be the very same spirit that comforts us. So it is my prayer that as we'll be praying, let us pray and invite the Holy Spirit to fall down and stay with us, within us, and believe that the Holy Spirit is the, a person whom Christ had said that he, when he, Jesus lives, he will live with us a comforter. It is only through the help of the Holy Spirit that we will be able to navigate uh, this great controversy. Not to say navigate because of our own wisdom. It is because that we will be led by the Holy Spirit. We will be guided by the Holy Spirit and we will be taught by the Holy Spirit. It is my prayer, may the good Lord bless us all as we ponder upon this word, in Jesus' name, amen. At this point in time, we are going to have a moment of prayer. So this is how we will do it. Uh, we have breakaway rooms. We, you can join the breakaway room where you will have uh, our fellow brethren, brothers and sisters, whom we will have a moment of prayer. I've been told that we've been allocated about 20 minutes. We would like us, I would like us that we can structure our prayer session like this. I'd like us to have a moment where we encourage each other in, in ways of how can we strategically distribute a, the publishing literature or anything that has to do with publishing to share the word with others. Then that number two, that if you have a testimony of the experience of the results of literature evangelism, it may, it may be through a thread or maybe through reading a book, uh, you can briefly share that. And uh, also that when we have uh, those discussions. If there was just an idea that you had implemented in sharing the literature, you would like to maybe share 
with uh, our brothers and sisters. Maybe they can try to use the same method that you are using uh, for in, in the areas you are, you are welcome to do that. But our prayer should be, may the good Lord be with us in this great controversy. Help us to be the agent of sharing the message uh, of bringing people closer to God. Number two, let us pray for the Holy Spirit to dwell in our hearts, fall down on us, to be with us always, to teach us, to guide us. And when we go through difficult times, as part of being in the missionary, and let the Holy Spirit comfort us. I'm going to allow you to go to the breakout rooms, then we will be allocated time. When the time expires, then could we please come back and join the main room as we will be wrapping up our uh, prayer, our uh, devotion for this evening. May the good God bless you as we will be going to our different rooms and may the good Lord be with you. In Jesus' name, amen.
Welcome, Pat. Uh, we are like to welcome you all from our uh, breakaway rooms. I pray and hope that we have benefited a lot. Uh, I'm just trying to manage time. And uh, I actually wanted us to just have a brief feedback. But for what I will do, I will not do that uh, today. Uh, so that I'm trying to manage time so that we finish on time as we had uh, planned. Uh, but I'm grateful that we had a moment of uh, prayer and uh, from the groups that we were with, I hope that we were encouraged and we have uh, shared our ideas on how we could share. I'm just having an idea. Uh, what we will do, I will speak to the communications department and uh, so that we can come up with a strategy of how we can share the feedback of uh, what we had discussed. So be on the lookout for communication from, the, uh, from our communication platforms is that uh, we just need a communication method of how we could share our experiences uh, with regards to publishing. So I was just having an idea now of creating actually a WhatsApp group where you, if you are in need of a publishing uh, material, resources, tracks, you just communicate it in the, the group and we see how can we help you. Uh, so may the group talk uh, bless us as we have come to the end of our session for today. Uh, remember, tomorrow we are still meeting uh, at the same time and uh, we look forward to uh, joining together with you as we will be going through uh, our reflections on the book Great Controversy. Thank you for participating and joining us. May the good Lord be with us and be with you and have a very peaceful and blessed evening. I'm going to ask, maybe let me see who can I ask uh, to pray for us. Uh, Elder, I think Elder Sambo, uh, can you please uh, just pray uh, close to the word of prayer? Then we'll have a song, uh, then we will disperse as we're having a song. May the good Lord bless you. Till we meet again tomorrow evening. Amen. Thank you so much. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you for the opportunity that we gather tonight to uh, hear more from your word and be encouraged to be your uh, servants wherever we are. We ask that uh, you go with us and as we reflect on the week of prayer, we may be changed and uh, be able to reach out to others around us in our homes and also even at work at, or at school. We thank you for the leadership of this uh, department. May you continue to lead throughout this week. For we pray all this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. Uh, have a peaceful evening. Uh, to be meet tomorrow. Amen. Amen.
Thank you for coming through. Let's meet again tomorrow. Have a very happy um, remaining part of the weekend. God bless.